Hello everyone, this is Norma Soothe here with a vlog for you in which we will go over the analysis of my research on blacklisted and censored American writers. Through this research I assembled an annotated bibliography that consisted of 10 sources. These sources range from textual print to online postings. Many of these writers were simply publishing works that just clashed with the public opinion of that era. If you want to give any feedback, you can reach me at nmasooth at spsu.edu. That email goes straight to my phone, so don't worry about not getting through to me. I'd love to hear what you all have to say on this subject. Now this time period is one that has scarred American history. We have leagues of Hollywood affiliates finding themselves on blacklists and unable to provide a living for themselves. Then we have many writers fleeing the country or protesting openly. Many find that they have been blacklisted for simply talking to those that are being watched. In my research, I found many of these cases and other situations. In the first source, I go over a cover story for Cobblestone History Reference Center. This article is by Meg Green, and it was published in 1994. The article to me looked like a great start as it summarized the landscape of that era and pulled many stories from multiple African American writers that were being affected. I also like that since it was published decades after, it was able to show the big picture of this era. Next, I have Uncle Tom's Children, the first of three pieces by Richard Wright in this annotated bibliography. The text directly showcases racial tensions in four essays. While this text was produced before his blacklisting and has no real apparent material to put him on a list, it does illustrate how Mr. Wright was a man that wanted to show the ills of racism. I like this piece because I have directly been affected by racial tensions. While they were not on a scale near this level, it was easy to see what he was going through and what his characters were facing in the later essays. NPR had a piece on James Baldwin in 2010. This man was not only faced with the barriers of racism, but also found himself discriminated against through sexual orientation. Baldwin was homosexual and did not closet this fact. His brave acts were heavily looked down upon, and this caused him to leave for France much like Richard Wright. I do admire that he was to try was able to try and tackle two major social issues at once and at such an early time compared to today's LGBT struggles. Following the NPR report, I found a biography on Vera Caspery by the New York Times. She was a socialist writer that would produce many screenplays. While she may have had socialist tendencies, she wrote a majority of her work about works about women that made something out of themselves. These women generally came from lower positions and status and worked their ways into higher positions. Her ability to overcome sexist views and become a successful woman in those times was fascinating. Staying on the theme of women's rights, I have The Outward Room by Millen Brand. This book follows a lady in the Big Apple, New York City. She's captivated by the city and is quickly trying to make a name for herself. Millen Brand was a large civil rights activist that found himself testifying in court to Senator Joseph McCarthy. It just shows just how radical these ideas were at the time and that they would lead to trials and censorship. The ideas of McCarthyism were extremely hazardous as they ruined lives. The next source I chose was a risky piece during that time. Why the Fifth Amendment by Howard Fast openly criticized the actions of this witch hunt. This essay was released in a communist publication in 1954 and the fact that Fast still had the courage to question these men is a brave act. This piece deals with McCarthy's desire to remove the Fifth Amendment, and why that is such an atrocity. My ninth source is another from Howard Frast, but from an earlier time. In it, we find out about his brushes with the law. The next two sources are from Richard Wright, and both are novels that garnered much attention and praise. The first being Native Son, a book where we find a protagonist that has been shaped by the culture around him and commits crimes. The driving point of this book is to show what the effects are of being treated as a subclass citizen. It opened the minds of many white populations. The other book, The Outsider, has a similar plot in that there is violence, but is from an intelligent man. The pro protagonist is a smart African American that gets the opportunity to leave his old life behind. He takes it and ends up leading a life of psych psychopathy and that leaves him dead. These novels are meant to make the masses think about their actions, and what may seem normal to them is intolerable. The ninth source I have here is Howard Fast's open letter to the American people. It is a call to those willing to help him. He begs for help as his committee of friends and colleagues is facing trial. 
While claiming charity is the main cause of this committee, there's a definite feeling that this has other factors that Howard is not disclosing. His actions are definitely what gets him on a blacklist. This committee is also communist-oriented. There's no doubt that this committee could be up to something else. My final source is one of the most interesting ones, in my opinion. It's of an FBI record kept on Richard Wright. The amount of detail in this file was enormous for someone who had left the country. There were so many tabs kept on Richard Wright while he was out of the country, and details ranged from where he was meeting and what he was doing to communication logs between Langley and the Paris Embassy regarding his status. This was my favorite source, as it's interesting to see amount, the amount of work put into creating the file and how vast their abilities are. Most of the document was blacked out, which is typical to FBI declassified, declassified documents, but it was still enough to look through. I found this time period to be very interesting, and I enjoyed finding the information on these writers and seeing all that they had to put up with. It's most definitely made me appreciate the time period we live in. Thank you.